right, good morning everyone. We just finished up a nice little breakfast here. It has been a very, very interesting adventure out here in West Texas once again, and today's gonna be no different. Uh, today we're gonna head to a different lake. We're out here at OHIV Elm Creek. Um, David does a phenomenal job at hosting everyone here on Lake OHIV, but the fishing's a little off. So, JJ, he's my guy. He's got a little tip. Uh, he's been fishing a different lake in this West Texas area for several years now. I've never been there before, so you and I get to go there together and learn a little bit about a different body of water. It's extremely different. Two days ago, this man caught 46 pounds of bass out there on this lake, and uh, yesterday there was another big one caught. So whenever I'm hanging out with this dude, whenever I'm hanging out with Brett Cannon, whenever I'm in West Texas in general, it's all about chasing huge, huge, huge bass. Today is going to be no different. So what do you? I mean, what are you expecting? The same kind of conditions? Yeah, the, the water is about as red as this ketchup. Wow. Okay. I mean, it, it's a it's a unique fishery. Yeah. Giant fish. Um, about one inch visibility, two inch visibility. And accuracy is everything. Yeah, the fish are always moving, they're yeah. just roaming around. Yeah. It'll take, even me, yeah. 50 cats. Really? Just to get a bait in front of In them. front of their nose, and that's the whole trick. That's the trick. Dude. All right, this coffee is hitting. I gotta go take a seat for a little bit, and then we're gonna hit the road. So we've got a couple hour drive, but when we get there, we're gonna see water like that. Two days ago, when Josh put the trolling motor in the water, it was, what, 20 minutes? And you had a 10, two. Two minutes, and you had a 10 pounder in the boat. So hopefully, Instantly. That's insane. But dude. honestly, I'd recommend getting a seat. If you were yeah, gonna cover a, a lot of water. Absolutely, yeah. All right. So you don't have to balance. Yeah. All you right. got perfect wind, perfect conditions. We're gonna catch 10 pounders today. Yeah, this Pretty. is what he tells all his clients. But I'm not a client, I'm just a homie. <laughs> all right, let's get after this. This is it. This is the big fish episode here. We're out here once again, West Texas. We're out here a little bit late. Uh, it is the off season, but we are big bass hunting today. I'm suiting up. This is one of those uh, West Texas gems. One of about four West Texas gems uh, that you don't quite hear about. This is my first time on this fishery here. And I gotta say, um, this isn't a lake that I did my own research on and said, hey, I gotta go fish this. Gotta give props to my guy, Josh Jones. He's been catching absolute giants out of here. There was a 13 pounder caught on this lake yesterday. So we're here in the middle of winter time. We all know they grew up in the winter time and all these typical winter time jerk baits, spinning rods, a rig stuff like that. I'm gonna put all that stuff away and I'm going with two dangerous swim baits here today. So it's gonna be kind of a challenge for myself trying to figure out this kind of muddy water lake, but I've got the brand new production seven inch and six inch dangerous swimmers. They look so pretty, that nice pearl color and this colored water should work really, really well. We'll get into more of the techniques and the how to's and things, but I know for a fact, I'm gonna call it right now, you guys are gonna see an absolute giant today, maybe even multiples. Right there is the better mouse trap. Line through top hook design should be pretty good. I'm gonna rig up two different ones. I'm gonna rig up the light version and the heavy version. Essentially what we're doing is we're using a lot of forward facing sonar, picking out schools and groups of fish and we're gonna try to present the light swim bait in front of you know the 12 foot or less type fish and then the heavy version in that you know 18 or less that 18 to maybe 10 foot range so depending on the wind i may stick with the super heavy one um, but the goal is to get it in front of as many big ones as possible today and with that tail thump and that head movement the fish just can't resist it especially this time of year
nice Texas north wind in December here. Water's really muddy, but I think they'll still buy the swim bait. sisters right there. Just chilling in the bushes. I just hung up my best swimming swim bait, seven inch. I don't have a plug knocker, so I don't know if you guys have ever seen this, but I'm gonna make my own with about a foot of 20 pound fluoro, four Carolina rigged weights, and a snap swivel. String the fluoro through four different weights here. So it's about three ounces of weight. And then just tie it to the swivel, attach the swivel to the main line, try to knock the plug off. Just like so. Just dangle it down there on my line. All right, go fetch. Homemade plug knocker, there you go. Save me a, my best swim bait. Oh, oh my God, eat it. Big follower, dude. Oh my gosh, wow. Giant follower, yeah. Oh my gosh, dude, one just whacked it. God. Yep, it bit it, got teeth marks on it. Golly, dude, a thousand percent. Mm. Got him. Came off. Freaking came off. That was a giant, dude. It came off. Oh my gosh. That was a giant, and it came off. It bit it, like smoked it, and then came straight towards me. Gosh, teeth marks all down the head of it. Oh my gosh. That was a freaking giant, dude. It smoked it and then just jammed right towards me. I couldn't keep up. Now see, I rolled up on this brush pile right here. It's just a little brush edge and there's a really, really big fish right underneath the boat. I can't present any lures to it, but I know if I hit a waypoint here, I could come back and present the lure on a full cast. I mean, I'm just drifting over this brush pile here. I just saw some, some bait fish run out of that brush pile because that fish just came and swam by. And that, that right there is a really, really big Texas bass. You could tell how she's hanging out in that opening right there. I mean, that's a telltale sign. You can see her fins moving. It's a telltale sign that she's on the hunt. She's looking in these holes. And the hard part is, I mean, it's just a, you know, your live scope beam is, is, is just a sheet of paper is all it is. It's paper thin. So the big key here is staying on the trolling motor and constantly scanning left and right. And if you scan out of her scope, if you scan off of her, then you make sure you go back the other way. So it's beneficial to just keep your, your heel down, your toe down, and just keep on rocking back and forth. And you're able, you're able to track single fish like I'm doing right here. And I could just kind of present the bait 
See, look at all those little bait fish are running from that single big fish. There goes my swim bait straight down, straight down towards, towards her head. I'm right on it right now. And, she, and it looks like I just kind of hit the back section, her tail section. But I've been tracking this fish. That's a cool thing about live scope forward facing sonar. You could track a single fish and present multiple lures, multiple baits to that single fish right there. I've been tracking her down for a good 30, 40 yards now. And she's just slowly moving along these, the tops of these, this brush right here. And it stands out like a sore thumb. Okay, the swim bait looks good. Swim bait's falling, it's falling. It's gonna meet her. She turned left. That's a really, really big bass. And it's worth taking the time to track these fish down and try to present as many lures as possible to her. And if you look up here, these are just balls of bait just above her head and she just kind of hovers underneath them. But really where, where your, your best chances of getting a fish, a monster fish like that to bite is when she's set up just right on top of the brush, maybe a little bit of bait fish on top, but when she's set up right on top of the brush, that means she's in like a you know predator feeding mode. Right now, this big one is just kind of hanging out in the middle of nowhere. Those ones are hard to catch, but they're fun to watch. There goes my swim bait through the bait ball. It's past the fish and now I'm gonna catch up with the fish. Swim bait is a couple feet behind her. I'm gonna sneak up on her. And I just swam it right past her face. I think I just felt that fish, I did. I just kinda, I really just hit that fish right now and it swam a little bit deeper. I'll tell you how you can really tell a big fish on live scope is when they appear like two separate fish. What you're seeing here, and you can see her uh, kind of turning towards me. What you see here is the body of the fish and then that back portion that looks like another fish is actually her tail. So that right there is an absolute monster bass. We're in like 22 feet of water. I mean, she is, you know, three feet off the bottom and she's over a foot tall. But when you see them like that and they're just a big blob and you can see their tail moving, that is an absolute giant bass. There's another one. There's another, there's another big one with it. Just past it. There goes my swim bait in the brush pile. I'm gonna start reeling out. And that big one is just hanging out underneath the boat. Let's see if I could drop my swim bait right on it. She's on the bottom now, my swim bait's right on it. And she's not interested. See my swim bait. Let's go try to catch these ones back here. There's a couple other ones on that brush pile. another one in that brush right there you can see it missed it by two feet oh there's that other big one see that big one on top right there that is that right there is a monster bass there's my swim bait there's my swim bait about to swing it on her head That's a really big bass. See if I could sneak up on it with a swim bait. There it is behind it. We got nice returns. My swim bait's right behind it. Now it's below it. Oh, that was right in her face.
Oh, I just touched her. I just touched. Oh, oh, I think she turned on it. Oh my gosh. I touched her tail with it and she, she jammed out of there. The water's so dirty on this lake here. You got to get it right in front of their nose for them to react to it. She's on the bottom. I'm gonna pop it off the bottom. There she goes swimming back through the brush. There goes my bait straight down towards it. I just tapped her again. That is a big, big bass. She's not willing to bite. But that right there just shows a precision of what live scope can be. Remember, it's a, it's like a sheet of paper. I mean, that, that transducer is just like a, a horizontal sheet of paper. Every time you slightly move that trolling motor, that sheet of paper scans left and right. And every time that sheet of paper hits a piece of brush or a, or a fish, that translates to what the image is you're seeing here. But the slightest movement in that pedal moves that sheet of paper, you know, outside of the scope, outside of that brush pile or fish. And then you gotta get back on the trolling motor and, and move it back the other way to stay on top of that fish to get that nice clear image. All right, so let's say I'm covering a bunch of water. Um, that's really where the scout mode of Active Target 2 comes into play. I'm, I'm hauling along, I'm, I'm casting, I'm searching around. Every time I move my troll motor pan left and right, that scout mode has got that nice degree to it. It's got that nice coverage to it where it'll pick up any little brush pile. I see a little bit of brush over here, and then it shows right up on that live scope here. So if anything pops up out of my live scope range, let's say on active target out to the left, I could just simply heel down on the trolling motor and point my live scope, my vertical transducer out that way. And as you can see, I could see a fish on that piece of structure that active target pointed out for me. Here's another good example of active target. Um, I'm just looking down here and I could just see structure, see a little bit of rock, there's a little divot there. And when I fine tune it up here on live scope, I could pan around and pick out that structure. Like right there, there's a rock right there and it showed up here first. So it's worth mentioning here, my target is that big fish right there. It's a big blob. It's got the telltale sign of a big one. It's got body and it's got a separate tail to it. And where you can really go wrong is pay attention to all these little dots up here. And what these are, they're either floating crappie, floating bluegill, little pods of bait. Um, but what you really want to look for when you're targeting big bass or schools of bass are those really solid white blob returns and those are really really big bass. Now let's say you're in a lake that has a lot of carp in it. Um, you know a, a really good way to tell the difference between a bass and a carp um, is you could see the, actually the carp's fork tail on live scope here. Um, also, you can see the hump back. If a carp, you know, if you're if you're looking at a blob here and you can't tell if it's a bass or a carp, um, you know, just look for that hump back or a fork tail, and that'll tell you it's a carp. Don't have to waste your time on that. But this right here is a bass. You can tell it's hanging around structure. It's big. It's lazy. It's kind of swimming around the brush pile um, and just really slowly. Every now and then you'll see some of these bait fish run off, run away from it, because obviously it's an apex predator. Um, so that's a really good indication that that's a bass right there. It's just real slow, lazy, and hanging around structure. everywhere oh my god 
Oh my gosh, it just ate it, dude. That one right there just nudged it. Or I nudged her, or either one, I felt it. Two of them right there. They don't look that, they don't look as big. How do you not bite that right there, dude? I went over its back, dude. I saw it move out of there. That is a giant. I lost my big bite, dude. I got four cranks on it. How many you got? I got. Do you take a picture? Yeah, absolutely. Not huge. It was a struggle. Uh, all right, so we grinded out here, and I had two bites total. Completely missed one, and the other one you guys saw. I mean, I jacked on it, and I got like four cranks on it. It was one of those big giant ones. I don't know. I saw it ten minutes prior. I mean, it was huge. I promised you guys you would see a big fish. And we just met back up with Josh here, so he says he's got a big one. How big? Ten and a couple over eight. Maybe. Wow. I don't know. Nice, dude. Here, let's hop in here. No stuff today. Absolutely. Dude, I threw at so many freaking giants. This dude. was the worst I've ever seen it out here. Like, what the hell? Yeah, they just haven't. They followed and followed. Did yeah. you get a lot of follows? Yeah. Like, they fall like that far. You want it vertical or horizontal? Vertical. Oh, yeah, that's a freaking giant. That smaller. Yeah. And another one. Yeah. I feel like I'm in a tournament, Those showing the crowd. Nine, dude. Those are this one's almost ten. right at 10. Almost 10. Bigger head. That one's a little skinny. Dude, those are all like the same class fish. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a big one, dude. <laughs> Very cool. Wow, that's awesome. I got four in here. Get you there. Look how dirty. There she goes. Wow. How do you like the troll motor? This is like my second day. Well, about my third day. Man, I put it in front of so freaking many, right on their nose, and just kind of turn on it. How heavy was your swim base? It's, good. it's going slow. Over. It's slow, right? Yeah. I jacked another one that was eight, nine, ten pounds. Really? But what I did, I was trying to run it weedless. Yeah. So I buried this hook up yeah. in it. Yeah. Naturally, I didn't get a good hook set. You get it all on GoPro? Not all of it. I ran out of uh, SD space. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I got enough. <laughs> How big was the one you hooked? Ah, uh, dude, it was huge. I, it was in that corner over there. It was one of those ones that had the freaking separate tail on. Just a giant, single, and like a beautiful bush. Crushed it, like teeth marks all the way down it, and I got like four handles on it, four turns on it. Turned it, and then just came off. Good hook set and everything? Yeah, everything felt good. Yeah. Not bad. You got, what, four? Four Five. good ones? Five good ones. All right, sun is setting out here in West Texas. It's getting cold. The coyotes are howling in the background there. They're probably laughing at me. Losing that big one, missing one. I didn't have a lot of opportunity. I think the key was I was using a heavier swim bait. I was using the, the heavy dangerous and I was crashing it in the trees, getting them to react, but they wouldn't follow it. And Josh caught a nice limit. I mean, you probably had over 30 pounds, 35 pounds or so. And, uh, and he was using a lighter swim bait. So I think that was the key is like just kind of letting it hover over their head a little bit. But thank you guys for hanging out and grinding with us. Josh, give them one absolute key uh, you need to do and keep in mind when you come out to West Texas and scope up giant. You got to cover water yeah. miles. miles. I mean, I went eight miles probably on, on the, the water. Trolling. trolling, just looking and got five to show. 
four, <laughs> so one every mile and a half, basically. Wow, dude. So yeah, that's amazing. Thank you guys again for hanging out. We're gonna go get some dinner, and we got a Dodge Deer on the way back because <laughs> last week I absolutely crushed a deer. Trey's mad at me because we're gonna have that that Dodge down for a while, but Gil Chris will take care of us. Also, you guys, if you're in the in the market for Dodge Ram, Toyota, Chevy, doesn't matter what it is, check out Gil Chris Automotive in the Dallas Fort Worth area. It doesn't matter if you're from out of town. Check them out because they're fishermen and they understand what we need. They understand that, you know, fishermen don't have a, have a lot of money. We all love to fish, spend money on gas, and uh, they take care of all the referrals that me or Josh send over that way. All you got to say is you're a fisherman and you know one of us and they will get you the absolute best price in the whole country, hands down, guaranteed. So thank you guys. We're out of here. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed some of that overlaid footage. We got some really cool footage of some of these big giant blobs. They're all like that size or bigger. Um, I just couldn't get them to snap. So we've got a few more weeks of the off season here and we're going to work on our scope game because I know I'm going to need on the Elite Series this year. So we out.